Hi. So today we're going to talk about the epsilon de delta definition of a limit, which is a more formal definition for what a limit is. So we're not just going to use those words arbitrarily close to a number as x approaches c. We're going to fully define what it means to get arbitrarily close to something. Okay, so the formal definition is now on your screen. What it says is we let f of x be a function defined on an open interval containing c, except possibly at c, and then we're going to let l be a real number. So if all that is holding and that's true, then the statement the limit as x approaches c of f of x equaling l means that for each epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if x minus c, the absolute value, is between zero and delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So what do all those words mean? There's a lot of stuff that you probably don't understand in there. I know it took me a really long time to understand what all of this meant when you put it together. So what it says if is f of x is going to be defined in some interval. So just like any other function, it's defined over a domain, and this interval is going to contain a c value. So the function doesn't have to be defined at c. We're still going to use this for our limit definition. And l is going to be a real number, so that's any number that you're used to. So in talking about the limit as x approaches c, that means that if we pick some epsilon value, and epsilon is always positive. So once we pick this epsilon value, it means that there has to exist a delta value um, that makes that last statement true. So if we take x minus the c value, the absolute value, it should be between 0 and delta. And then f of x, the function values minus the limit should be less than epsilon. So that's probably still not too clear. So we're going to draw a picture to illustrate what that all really means. Okay, so we got our nice coordinate axes. We'll let this be our function, f of x. We'll put c down here and l over here. So we usually choose epsilon first. And what epsilon is, is a window actually around l. So we pick an epsilon value and get this neighborhood around l, where these brackets, the lower one is defined by the limit minus the epsilon value, and the upper one is defined by the limit plus the epsilon value. So we just give ourselves this window around the limit number. And then once we have epsilon, we have this delta value. And delta is based on the epsilon. So it does the same thing. It gives us this delta neighborhood around c, where again, the lower one is defined by c minus delta. And the upper one is defined by c plus delta. OK. So all the epsilon delta limit definition says is if we have these epsilon and delta um, numbers, these values, that absolute value of x minus c, that just means that we're somewhere inside of this neighborhood down here. So we're like where these red dashes are. So if the absolute value of x minus c or the distance between x and c is between these delta neighborhoods, it means that if we go up to the function and find the function value for one of those and then go over here, it has to put us back into that epsilon neighborhood around L. So that's all it says. So as you decrease epsilon and bring them closer and closer around L, your delta neighborhood is going to get smaller and smaller too. So as they get smaller and smaller, you're going to get closer and closer to your C value and closer and closer around your limit. So that's what's going to formally define what it means to get arbitrarily close to those numbers. So you probably don't really care about that unless you understand how to use it to prove limits, because that's probably what your homework and tests are asking you for. And we're going to explore how to do that using example problems. So we want to prove that the limit as x approaches 1 of 7 minus 3x is equal to 4. So when you do these problems, what you want to start with is your f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So we're going to write that down first, this f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So that's always what we start with. And what you eventually want to do is you want to manipulate it with algebra by factoring or doing whatever you have to to make it look like this. So what you want it to look like is that x minus c less than delta quantity. So I like to write those things up on the top of my paper when I do these problems to help keep me more organized. So now we're just going to plug in for what we have here. So we have that 7 minus 3x minus the limit, which is 4, is less than epsilon. And what we eventually want it to look like is x minus 1 
less than delta. Okay, so now we're just going to start simplifying and manipulating this black writing to make it look like the red. So if we simplify in here, 7 minus 4 gives us 3, so we get negative 3x plus 3 is less than epsilon. So now to make it look like that x minus 1, we probably want to factor away a negative 3. So we're going to do that inside of our absolute value still. So we have this negative 3 out here times, and when we factor it out, we're left with an x minus 1 which is exactly what we were looking for before, and that's still less than epsilon. So now we're going to bring the negative 3 outside of the absolute value, and when we do that, it becomes a positive 3 because of the absolute value signs. So we have positive 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon. So now we're almost done. We want the x minus 1 quantity by itself, so all we're going to do, or all we're going to do is divide both sides by 3. So we're going to get x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 3 and you're done. That's your answer. So now to be officially done, we need to write our answer in a specific format. So what you want to do is write, given any epsilon value greater than zero, so any epsilon bigger than zero, we want to choose delta to be equal to that epsilon over three that we solved for. So that's it. That's your final answer. So that says if you picked any epsilon, so say you picked one, for epsilon, you would want to pick delta to be one-third. And when you did that, every time that you based your delta off of that epsilon over 3, you would have those proper neighborhoods and windows set up on your function, just like we did in the picture on the last slide. So that's how you solve all of the linear cases, so anything that looks like a line. And now we're going to look at two more examples about how to solve it when it's a quadratic function, because those are a little bit more tricky. There's one or two extra steps that you need to do in order to solve it. So the first example we're going to look at is prove that the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus x is equal to 6. So again, we want to write what we want to start off with and what we want to finish with at the end. So we're going to start with x squared plus x minus 6 is less than epsilon, and we want to finish with x minus c, or x minus 2 in this case, is less than delta. So now that we know where we're starting and where we want to end, we can start using algebra. So because it's quadratic and we want something to look like an x minus 2 come out of there, we should probably try and factor. So this one factors. It factors into x plus 3 and x minus 2 is less than epsilon. So now we have that x minus 2 quantity, but we have an extra x plus 3 hanging around, and we don't want that. And we don't, don't, we don't just want to divide by x plus 3, because then our epsilon is based on x, and we don't want it to be based on x. We want it to just be epsilon over a number, or epsilon times a number, whatever it is. We don't want x's in there as our final answer. So what we need to do is replace x plus 3 with a number. So in order to do that, we're going to write choose delta to be less than or equal to a number. And normally we'd pick 1. It's usually the common number that is used. And that means that our delta can go, our delta neighborhood is going to be any distance from 1 away from our c. So that means we can plug in possibly 2 plus 1 and 2 minus 1 as our far endpoints of our delta neighborhood. So we would get 3 and 1. So we want to plug that 3 and 1 now into that absolute value of x plus 3 and see what we get. So we get 3 plus 3, which is 6, and absolute value of 1 plus 3, which is 4. And so what you want to do now is you want to replace it with the largest possible number. So we're going to replace it with the 6, because that's the largest number that x plus 3 is ever going to be on that delta neighborhood we just defined. So now we're going to replace that, and we're going to write 6 times the quantity x minus 2 is less than epsilon. So now we're going to solve just like before. Divide by the 6 and you get x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 6. So pretty simple once you figure out what number to plug in. And then one more thing changes for quadratics and that's how you write the answer. So now we're going to write given any epsilon greater than 0 we're going to choose delta to be equal to this. Instead of just saying epsilon over 6, we're going to write choose delta to be equal to the minimum. So we write min and then draw a bracket 
of 1 or epsilon over 6. Close your brackets. And all that means is if for some reason you picked an epsilon value that when you divided it by 6 gave you a number that was larger than 1, you would have to automatically pick this 1 because of what we wrote over here. Because we said that delta had to be less than or equal to 1. So the largest you could pick is 1. So that's why you have to write the answer like that. So now these are a little complicated, so we're going to do one more example of these before we're done for today. So for this one, we want to prove the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus 2x is equal to 15. Okay. So again, we're going to do the same thing as before. You start with that f of x minus l quantity. So in this case, we're going to have the absolute value of x squared plus 2x minus 15 is less than or equal to epsilon. And what we want is x minus c is less than delta. So in this case, it's going to be x minus 3 less than delta. Okay. So again, we're going to start off by factoring. So x squared plus 2x minus 15 factors into x plus 5 and x minus 3. So that's good. We have that x minus 3 factor showing up that we want. And again, we need to replace that x plus 5 with a number. So yet again, we're going to write choose delta to be less than or equal to 1. So now we need to figure out what the endpoints of that delta neighborhood would be. And to do that, again, we're just going to do 3 plus 1 and 3 minus 1. So you're just going to take your c value and add and subtract 1. So when we do that, we get 4 and 2. So now we're going to plug 4 and 2 into that x plus 5 and see what we get. So we get the absolute value of 4 plus 5, which is 9, and the absolute value of 2 plus 5, which is 7. So the larger value is the 9, so that's what we're going to replace the x plus 5 with. So now we're going to write 9 times the quantity absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon. And to solve that, we're just going to divide by the 9. So our final answer is going to be x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 9. So now I just need to write that answer statement to be completely done. So again, we're going to write, given any epsilon greater than 0, choose delta to be equal to. And because it's a quadratic and we did that choosing step, we have to write the minimum. Bracket 1, comma, epsilon over 9, and bracket. So there you go. That's another example of how to do a quadratic with the epsilon delta definition. So I hope this helped clarify some things for you, and I hope now you can go forward and do whatever work you have to do with these things. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching.